What's up guys, Sean the Bro here. We are back for another episode of the third person tutorial in Unreal Engine and C++. As you can see, I've added more orbs all around the map. That's because in today's episode, we are going to be dealing with health, armor, and shields. So we've already had the health bar working for some time now, but I wanted to get armor and shields working, uh, kind of like in Apex Legends fashion. I think is one of the better ways to describe it but basically your shields are going to take damage for you until and they will protect you from health damage until your shields are out we'll be able to also heal our shields specifically um depending on the power-ups we pick up so for example if i take damage these red orbs are damage orbs if you were watching this series you should know that the red orbs are damage orbs the green orbs are heal orbs and now the blue bar at the top left, which was currently unused in the last episode, or previously unused in the last episode, is now being used for your shield bar. So if we get another red one, it's going to take away more damage from our shields. We can get the final one, and you'll see that we lost our shield and lost some of our health. Now, I can go and heal up. Say I'm, if this is Apex, I'm using syringes, right? Okay, I've got full health, but I've got no shields back. Now I can use my shield cells. And there you go. And then when I take damage again, it should take damage from my shields again. Perfect. So that's what we want to accomplish today. Um, I did plan on making it so you can go pick up like body armor or something along those lines or even pick up the weapons, but then it would delete the instance on the ground. The reason I didn't do that is because I thought that would be a little bit more work um, on top of all of this that wasn't really related to this video like picking up armor and or weapons and having them get deleted or having your current one drop to the ground is a lot different than just dealing with the health and armor logic and there's a bit of logic behind it it's pretty easy basically um, what we are going to do is we're going to go into our C++ class and we want to uh, make some new variables specific to armor so uh, if you've been following this guide exactly, you should have very similar to the class layout I have in the header file. But just be careful, uh, this function that I wrote right here, I'm not using. So don't worry about this. This will be for the next episode. I already started some work on it because I had some extra time to play around with it. And that's all that is. So don't worry about this just yet. And the important factors here are we want to heal armor or heal shields function, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to be, and I should actually do, that a uh, heal amount is fine. But uh, basically this is going to be the exact same as the heal function, but we're going to be using it with our armor variable. So that's easy enough. I'll show you it still, but here's the definition for me. Just void heal armor with the amount you want to heal. Um, and then we want um, a boolean for has armor, which determines basically if the damage that is being taken occurs on the shields or the health. And then, lastly, we want a player armor float. And that determines how much armor we actually have. So if you make those three in your uh, header file, you can go over to your CPP file and go down in the constructor. You can set has armor to true for the case of this test. If you don't want your player to start with armor, that is fine. In the next episode when we are equipping weapons and armor and uh, swapping them out with what you currently have and what's on the ground, then you'll be able to just toggle has armor to off and we'll go pick up armor and then we'll switch it to true and then the same logic will apply. For the cases of this tutorial and for simplicity, I just started the player with armor so we can see it right off the bat. And then I go ahead and set player armor to also be one since in the progress bar, the default progress bars for Unreal Engine, one is the maximum value, not 100. Okay, everything else is gonna be the same until you get down to your take damage function. Previously, you just had this in your take damage function. You probably had a log where you're taking damage for however many points, you, and then you subtract the damage amount from your health. If it's less than zero, just set it equal to zero so the progress bar doesn't do anything weird, and so we don't have this weird negative value we have to use uh, down the line for anything. Now, since we're, when we take damage, we have the ability to take damage from our shields first and then our health. Or if you wanted something like 
some ability that takes damage right from their health and ignores the shield, which is also something you could do. We want to have some extra logic in here. The logic that we're going to implement today is basically you're going to do an if check, and if you have armor, do the damage on the armor, else do the damage on the health. So there's a little bit more when you're working with the armor because you have to remember that you have to restore the armor separately. So you can do this how, you know, many different ways, but I think this is the easiest way to do it, so I'll show you. So still take your player armor variable and subtract the damage out from it. Right, that makes sense. However much damage we take, if we take 15 damage, we had 100 health, we want to end up with 85 damage. But if the player armor goes below zero, so your armor is depleted, we want to set has armor to false. This enables us to uh, deal damage to our player's health, which is what we want. Now, this part might be a little weird or might look a little weird, but this is kind of what we want to do. So, if you do, if you have five health, or excuse me, if you have five shields and 100 health, and you get hit with 25 points of damage, well, your shield isn't going to absorb all that damage. So you want to go, you want to do some damage to your shield and then do some damage to your health. So what we do is we subtracted the player armor or the damage amount from the player armor, which means if we're talking about the scenario I just mentioned, the five armor that we had gets destroyed by the 25 damage we had, and we still have negative 20 for player armor. So for the health, we want to add that negative 20 value. So health plus equals player armor. So what this will do is health plus negative 20 equals player armor. And you know, that results in player health minus 20 equals player armor. So basically, you take your health, you subtract the uh, additional negative value from the armor, and then you get your new health. Hopefully that makes sense. And then set your player armor back to zero. You don't want it to stay negative because when you want to regain your armor or your shields, you want to make sure that you don't have some negative, like, oh, I have negative three shields, so I didn't shield up properly that doesn't make any sense so or maybe that's what you want for whatever reason that's fine obviously but if you just want your shield to be at zero i'd say do this take your health and just basically add the negative value for how much damage was greater than your armor and then reset the armor back to zero so after that one transaction you will not have negative values anymore else do your standard stuff basically subtract damage from your health if health is less than zero, health equals zero. Easy enough, right? Okay. And then the only other thing we have to change here is we do have a heal armor now. Which if you look at the function above heal, and if you were following this tutorial, you already have the heal function. It's very similar. Obviously change your variables out from player health to player armor. Um, when you have heal armor, always set has armor to true. Because... Otherwise, if you don't set has armor to uh, true when you heal your armor or heal your shields, then what'll happen is, say you lose all your shields, has armor gets set to false, and then uh, once that's set to false, even if you get your health back and you go to regain your shields, the next time you go to take damage, if has armor is still false, you're going to take damage from your health and not your shields. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So make sure has armor is back to true. That's pretty much the only difference in heal and heal armor, other than you want to make sure that you use player armor instead of player health. Okay? So I know that might be a little bit confusing, but basically the gist of it is when you take damage, check if they have armor. Subtract the damage from the armor. If the armor is less than zero, then they don't have armor anymore, and make sure you uh, use the remainder to subtract from the player's health. Once the remainder has been subtracted from the player health, reset the armor so that you're back to zero armor and not a negative value. Then, when they're healing, just make sure that they heal the, their appropriate armor or health. Okay? And whenever you're healing armor, make sure that the has armor boolean is back to true. That's all we're going to need code side. So I made a change as well. So just make sure you save, build, and then this will finish in there too. Make sure you get no errors. Build one successful. Go to Unreal, compile. Make sure you get your changes. And sometimes you'll have to compile more than once. No joke, because Unreal is just, it hates us.
doesn't want us to succeed, so sometimes it throws curveballs in your way. <laughs> but no, so now what we need to do is I did make a BP armor, but I'm not going to use that today because, again, I changed topics and wanted to do the armor logic opposed to the pickups. So I'm going to close these out. Uh, now what I did is... Okay, let's start at the top here. So I basically literally just made a new material. So if you add new material or duplicate the collectible damage or collectible health if you've been following this tutorial. And I just double clicked on the color here and made it yellow. And yellow is the shields in this case. It should probably be blue. It doesn't matter. We can make it whatever color we want. Maybe we want it to be this color right here. Then it's like perfect. Well, that's what we got. Whatever color you want, doesn't matter. But that's how you make a material in case you are new to the series and you haven't done it before. And now when you go into here, you can already see them. Now they're blue. So blue are your shields. Whoops. Blue are your shields. There you go. Okay, next. In the character HUD, which is you know, the HUD widget that we made. We had a blue bar that was, I previously labeled it as stamina, but we actually want it to be shields in this case. So all you have to do to bind it is go down here to the details, progress percent, hit this, and then bind. It'll automatically create a function for you that'll look like this, but with nothing in it. You'll just have this node and this node. And what you want to do is copy the stuff from your health bar percent into the shield bar percent or just redo it it's only three nodes it's not hard but just get the player character that you intend it to be if this is a single player game then get player character zero is fine cast it to your code class and then get your player armor variable instead of your player health variable return that and your progress bar will be working okay perfect now, uh, collectible damage. This is something that I made before. So if you're familiar with the tutorial, again, you will get to, you already know what this is. But what I wanted to do is I changed the amount, the damage amount to 0.42. Now, it doesn't matter what amount you make it. The reason I made it an uneven number is previously it was 25, like 0.25. And I wanted to show off what would happen if you did not change your player armor back to zero. Remember how I mentioned you have to change it back to zero after you subtract the remainder from the player's health? That's because if you, if we just had this as 0.25, we would never be able to test it because the shields would just always even out to being zero. Um, that's all. So you can change it to whatever you want, but I'd recommend changing it to a number that will drop you from, from shields and have a remainder left over to reduce your health as well, like you see in the top left. That way you can tell, hey, when I heal this time, or when I get shields this time, then things are working as intended. See? Okay. So that's the only thing I'd recommend changing there, but you don't technically have to do that. Just a little safeguard so that you can make sure you're doing it correctly. Lastly, uh, I don't need anything in here. Lastly, we just need the collectible shields. And it's if you have made the collectible damage and or collectible health in the past, it's the same exact thing, except instead of calling heal, the heal function we call heal armor, and we pass it 0.25 as the value. And for anybody who just wants this part of it and has not been following the tutorial, I'll show you the whole function here. Get player character zero. Check if we're overlapping with the player character. If we are, cast it to the code class, heal their armor, and then destroy the pickup. And then when you want to place them around the map, you can take any of these blueprint actors. And I should say these are blueprint classes. So if you want to make any of these, just add new, blueprint class, go into it, and then add a component and add something like a sphere or a cube or whatever. Anything that you can see. And then when you click on it, you can also see the set the material here to change its color. And that's how we make them look like that. But now, if we are to look at this, we should have a nice game where we have 
fully functional health and shields. So if I get this, so when if I heal my health, my shields don't heal, which is what we want. If I heal my shields while they're down, they do heal. When I take damage, I should take damage from my shields first, and then my health. The last test case that I used is if I lose all my health, or excuse me, all my shields, I should be able to collect shields, keep my health the same, damage, get damaged again, and it should come out of my shields, not my health, and then I can heal my health. And that's how you know you got all your functionality working. I think, is this where, oh, I didn't mean to hit build, my bad. Um, I think if this is what I think it is, there we go. Um, I still do this in level blueprint? Yes, I do. So people have been asking me because I forgot it during one of the fighting game episodes, and that is my fault. If you want to just test your widget, this isn't the best place to keep it uh, for making your game. But in terms of testing, the easiest way I usually do it is go to Blueprint, Open Level Blueprint, and go ahead and on Begin Play, get Player Controller Zero, which is you know your player, and then just do pull off of this and do Create Widget, and then select your widget that you want. In our case, it's Character HUD, and make sure you add it to the viewport, and that's how you can test your HUD. All right, guys, I think that is the end of the tutorial for today. Next time, we will definitely be going over picking up weapons and or shields and having your current one drop. So if I have an assault rifle and there's a pistol on the ground and I want to swap them, I will do that. But the assault rifle won't get destroyed. It'll be on the ground so we can pick it up later. Same with the shields. If you have a full shield and there's a broken shield on the ground, you can swap them out, things like that. We want that kind of functionality for the next episode. I've already started on it, but I think it's too much to put in for this one. So we're going to end this here. But I hope this does everything that you hope that it would do. Uh, please let me know in the comments if there seriously is anything else you want to know about this. Uh, feel free to join the Discord on there. There's, I think there's like 36 of us now. And we can all, we all talk and help out about programming issues and uh, just honestly anything we want <laughs> but a lot of it a lot of people come there for the programming help and i really love having you guys because it's awesome to talk with you and meet you and you know help me get better at also explaining these things because i don't always explain them as well as i could anyway guys i'm sean the bro and in, if you could do me one more favor uh my fiance and i have started a twitch channel that has been doing pretty well i will put a little picture in the middle here a little overlay but it is sean the bro 27 if you can come watch us on Twitch or give us a follow, really, really appreciate it. Something we wanted to do for a while, but we did never, we never had the internet stable enough. Now we have moved, and I'm up on my desk. So I'm, <laughs> for everybody who was asking, I'm up on my desk. I'm not on the floor anymore. Um, and yeah, and we've been Twitch streaming, and a lot of you have come by from the Discord, and a lot of you have come by just from YouTube itself, and I really appreciate you guys. We're up to, I think, 41 followers, and this is only the second week that we've been doing it. So you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting us. And yeah, guys, let me know anything you need in the comments. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one.